Hej, Michael. Hej, Linus. Good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Welcome to my, my, my little cabin here in the northern part of Jutland. Thank you very much. Nice to be here and thank you for your invitation. Yeah, you're welcome. It's a, it's a pleasure for me to finally give you a little impression of, of what I've been doing uh, hunting-wise. It's always been uh, in your place in wonderful Tony Lumbi. I can see you have a good collection of Robux here as well. Yeah, that is my passion. Sweden, Denmark and England. England, Germany, Poland. Yeah, we've yeah. been collecting all over the world almost. Yeah, collecting, hunting. I'm more of the hunting part is more important than the collecting part yeah. for me. But it's a very nice collection you have. Um, I heard about your big robot you shot in the south of England. Yeah, that's you a, have to tell me a little bit more about that. That's quite a story. You know, I've been hunting there for in the same estate for seven years now. And uh, when I came over there the, uh, the first year, they had a picture on their mobile phone from a robot that was massive, 16-pointer, and a shooting body. And um, he had three females always with him. And um, we, ch we, we tried to hunt him and chase him for more than a week. Uh -huh. over, t over two weeks, actually, I had to come back to see him. Uh, I saw the three females two or three times, spent afternoons uh, sitting there looking at the females feeding. He was not there. He was never found, he was, so he was not shot, he was not killed by a car or... What year was that? that, that that's seven years ago now. Seven years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and in that area, there is a lot of uh, strong robux and also quite, uh, quite normally to see abnormal robux. Um, for sure, the genetics and uh, the minerals in the in the ground gives opportunities for uh, for abnormal robots. Good genetics, of course. Yeah, and then uh, then uh, four years ago, um, I was out stalking, and we saw this uh, young, three maybe four years old buck, and he um, he uh, he was a seven pointer. He had as if he had an extra mm. extra length uh, at, at one of the. Um, at one side of the horns, and uh, we, oh no, it, it's a funny, funny trophy, but let's give him another year. Um, and we did, but then uh, Corona came. So um, I couldn't come over there for, for two years, and, and the bog is in an area where the, the keeper doesn't come there very often because he's uh, primarily uh, taking care of his pheasants and partridges, and that's mainly in the other part of the, the estate. Uh, so he was not looking out for this specific robot. Uh, but then when I came over last year, he said, oh, I've seen a massive robot. Um, we just wait and see. And he had seen the, the robot in, in the exact same field, uh, three evenings from uh, 7.30 to, uh, to 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. every day, yeah, three right. days in a row. I came over on the fourth day, no robot. So, um, so we looked all over. We looked in a, in, in a very dense forest. It's old uh, oak forest with a lot of branches in the bottom, so it's very difficult stalking. And, um, and we found a super robot, uh, but an eight-pointer. And we managed to shoot him a super cracking trophy. Um, and then he said, well, it's not him. <laughs> but it was like, you know, 300 meters from where he had seen it uh -huh. in, in the forest. So it was quite unusual that there, there, there would be two so, uh, trophies like that. And we hunted him for four days and uh, we didn't see any sign of him. So maybe it was the one. Then, uh, then I went back to Denmark and then uh, two weeks later he called me. He, he was out uh, for um, uh, shooting foxes. So he parked his, uh, his gator. Uh, by the forest, and then walked out, uh, sitting a uh, hundred meters out from the forest, yeah. uh, calling for fox. And then this monster robot came out, it looked around, looked at the gator, and then it walked down to the gator, and then, boom, with the horn, and then looked at it, and then it walked straight by him, like one meter uh, from him. But his phone was in the gator, so, and he was just, wow, this is it's a monster. This is a monster. Mm. So uh, I flew over again. And um, this time I brought my son as well. He should, uh, I told him he was allowed to shoot uh, one normal robot uh, if we found a good one. And uh, we stalked for three hours, we probably saw 10 or, or 15, six pointers, three, four years old, super potential. And I just said, no, sorry, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then we came out uh, on, on the field where we, we uh, had the intention to spend the last hour where he, he, we, he had shown himself. 
it's uh, incredible uh, you have were lucky about the corona in this period so yeah you, but you and, and and i don't know what happened because if i had been there the the following year uh, maybe we would have shot him but uh. because now it was a really funny abnormal bug and as you know five years old that that that, that i know you think it's normally too <laughs> early but uh, That day you, you, you uh, really went out for this Roebuck. Uh, tell a little, a little bit more about the experience. And uh... Yeah, I, I was obviously really excited because now we knew that there was a monster bug and, and, and I had already shot one really, really good bug. So, uh, and uh, I had the privilege of having my son with me. He, he's uh, relatively new into stalking. So I told him, you can, you can shoot a bug if you see a proper one, but you're not going to shoot a young one or just shoot a bug. Uh, you have to, uh, to 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 learn it the right way. Yeah. And uh, we, we saw a lot of bugs that morning. It was a beautiful uh, sunshine and and uh, in, in the evening. And uh, we went out at five. And uh, I think we we walked for two hours through the forest and uh, saw a lot of fields and a uh, lot of activities uh, with uh, uh, it was beginning of a, of uh, of July. So we, you, you were beginning to have a little bit of pre rot before they, they, they start really moving our, uh, around and de defend the territories. And, um, and, and we came eventually out to where we, uh, where we had seen the, or the keeper had seen the big buck. Mm. And, and there was actually a female and a, and a buck five, 600 meters from us. Um, I looked at it in my, my, my binox. I have eight times uh, magnification mm. uh, and my son has 10 times on his. And he said, well, that's a good buck. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. But I could see on the size of the body that it, it was quite a small animal. Yeah, it was not bigger than the, than the female. So, and the keeper was not interested because he had seen it just around the next corner. So we, we sneaked <laughs> down there. And I remember my son said, are you, are you sure? I think it's a good buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah wait, we, it won't run away. And then when we got back and started stalking it, uh, when we came into 300 meters of distance, uh, the keeper turned around and said to me, oh, this is a big one. Wow. So I told my son, you stay here. <laughs> and then, then we sneaked into it. And, and this dog was not very difficult, uh, to be quite honest. He was out on a, on a uh, feeding. Uh, the female was in front of him. And he was 100% focused on that. Uh, and we had perfect wind, hardly any wind. And uh, we had a little bush uh, between us and, and the buck uh, and, and, and the female. So we could sneak in with the bush as, as cover. I think we sneaked in on 70 meters. And then he put up the stick for me and I... I hardly dared to look at the trophy because I knew it was big, <laughs> so I didn't want to get fever or anything. So um, I just uh, took a deep, deep breath and, and, and shot him in typical heart reaction and the ran 30 meters. And the keeper said to me, well, congratulations, you just shot your, the bug of your lifetime. And when I saw him, Incredible. I realized, okay, yeah. this is, uh, I've shot some big ones for you, <laughs> but this one was, uh, this one was uh, significant. That is an incredible trophy. So here it is, the... Uh, the uh, result of a fantastic uh, evening in Hampshire with, uh, with my son and my, my keeper in, uh, in uh, that estate over there. Uh, an absolutely amazing trophy. This Roebuck is really incredible, Michael. Yeah. It's not a normal Roebuck you have been shot in Hampshire. It's very heavy, as you say. Um, but actually, how big is it? Yeah, I just had it measured. Obviously, it, 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 uh, you, you need to wait a, a month at least. In the old days, you had to wait three months. So we, we waited enough. Uh, so it was measured. Uh, so on points, it's 273.65 points, which is absolutely amazing. So if you look at the... Some say that this is the new world record. Um, because on the list of the biggest box with points, uh, there's two box which are bigger, uh, around 277, three, four points bigger. But they are not approved uh, as, uh, as world records because they are uh, considered abnormals. And that, that's always a judgment. So in order, if this is the new world record, it, it has to go down to the committee uh, somewhere in Eastern Europe. Uh, where they meet, I think, once a year. Uh, and actually, there is uh, 15 or 20 people 
evaluating whether this is uh, the new world record. Yeah. So, so what you see on, 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 on when they are not approved as, uh, or when they are abnormals, that is uh, not so much how many points do they have, but they need to be separate, the, the coronets, and they need to be uh, uh, properly mounted on the skull underneath. I'm, I'm not quite sure how you explain that. Because some of the, uh, the, the, the abnormals, they are, the, the coronets just grow together with the skull. Yeah. And then obviously it, it, it's uh, the skull itself and not so much a trophy who's, uh, which gives the weight. Um, I've heard um, uh, the, 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 the gentleman who measured it had measured more than 50,000 bucks in his life. And he said, by far the biggest one ever. Uh, and for sure, this should be the new world record. And uh, he has a copy of the current uh, Swedish world record. I think it's from 87 or something like that. Mm. And this one is uh, 25 points bigger yeah. uh, than, uh, than that one. The Swedish book from Vic 12 is about, I don't know exactly, but about 250 points. Yeah, uh, 247. Yeah. So uh, it's... Uh... It's a little bit more, this one. It's quite heavy. Uh, I have to have put it's, it here to, to, to keep it because... Uh, it's a hundred gram more heavy, <laughs> so net. So that's, uh, that's a lot of weight when you come up. Yeah, there. it's a little bit irregular, but not very much. But I'm not in the international judgment group, so I can't give you any advice. But and uh, however, it's it's an incredible book, and you have a story about in your life. And uh, no matter what, whether yeah. it's a world record or not, it's uh, definitely the book of my lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, Linus, um, as you can hear, then when, when I walk around with my, with my, with the keeper on the estate, uh, I try to, together with him, to use our best judgment and, okay, this is three years, this is four years, look at the coronets, they haven't fallen down yet, and uh, look at the neck, and, uh, but I've been hunting with you, I think, for 10 years, uh, we've shot some amazing bobs on Trolle Lungby, and, uh, I know you have a much more, uh, what should we call it, scientific way of evaluating whether there's more potential in this park or not. And I've had the pleasure of harvesting some of them, also some of those that turn out not to have more potential. Yeah. So what is it that, uh, that you do as a secret on Trolle Lungby? It's, it's not all of the Robux who's getting big if you give them the right age, but some of them are growing very big and we don't have the capacity that you have shot that one big one uh, like you have in England and you have to have the genetics of course and the soil and uh, like that we don't know why they grow that big uh, as, as your buck have, have been growing but the most, impo most important of the, the management I would say is to, to give them the right age I give them rather one year extra that I'm shooting one year too early. And um, I know because uh, I've, yeah. I've tried to convince you a number of times that this is ready. <laughs> uh, I give them, uh, I would rather give them a second uh, year to, to uh, but it's also a little bit different between um, the t different areas. Uh, I would say our Roebuck is getting the biggest at uh, five to six years or something and some areas they say six seven and some some areas they say maybe four five and um, i would say it's a, it's the genetics and, and soils and environments they're living in uh, and and as you told us before about the area and you in hampshire is is very good area you have actually no neighbors shooting them too early and um, the traffic is calm and uh, you have good place for them to stay so why not give them give some yeah, extra the risk, yeah. Yeah. and often when you have uh, this uh, robux is growing a little bit abnormal it's often the, the last year uh, they're growing abnormal yeah. when they're getting old about five six seven years yeah. old they go and be a little bit special something is maybe happening in the, in in the in the genetics or what you call it um, yeah so, or hormones or whatever yeah, the hormones, it is yeah, yeah of yeah. course and then um I, I would rather give them some extra year than shoot them too early. So it's, you have learned, good. 
Yeah, I've learned. Uh, I've learned. I'm trying to learn. But but uh, but then on the other hand, I must admit we've also had uh, the pleasure of hunting some of those that didn't turn out yeah. better, but turned out to be a grumpy old box with uh, amazing trophies, mm. but not maybe uh, necessarily a big six-pointer trophy, but uh, yeah. an old worn-out uh, where. I think last where we shot one uh, that was nine years old, yeah. which is quite unusual for a robot. Yeah. So um, um, I know you know him as well as I know him, Franz Albert. He shot a very old robot in our estate. I think it was about eleven years when we yeah. shot him. Yeah. We have been following him for many years, and we we knew, but he was always a regular six pointer. He was he's a very tall six pointer, but not very massive. He was yeah. quite thin, but. Then we decided now we know him for so many years and he's gonna, never going to grow big, big, big as I, as I wanted. But it was, uh, it was a very good robot, but uh, it was so special so we, we could follow him for many years. And that's the way we do it in, in Columbi, that we uh, are following our robots as much as we can with camera. We're taking a lot of photos. You know, Finn Saxlev, mm -hmm. he, he used to help me a lot to... to um, to get a collection of the Robux, then we then we compare the Robux from year to another and see how much are they growing bigger. Or sometimes it's it's not going this way all the time, getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. But sometimes it get a little down and then it grow bigger the next year after. So um, it's it's very very interesting. But you never learn the the whole way to <laughs> to to manage it. But uh, I think it the best thing to to make it is to get a the good age of the Roebuck, and then you have uh, the opportunity to get a big Roebuck as well. But but with the, with the pictures, I've obviously seen a lot of those pictures, and uh, also tried to say, well, this this must be six years old now. We should harvest him now. I'm always very un, uh, not so patient as, as you are, but but um, but but when you see a Roebuck actually going back, it takes a lot of courage to actually leave it another year. And then again, you have proven that uh, okay, uh, they do come back sometimes. Yeah, sometimes you, you, you lose them, of course. You get hit by cars or be shot or they just disappear. We don't know what's happening. That's the way of management, of course. You can't, it's not 100% successful, of course. But um, if you have to win, you have to, to, to spare a, a lot of Robux. Good coming. It doesn't always count about how big the Robux are. That you also have to have a good experience when you hunt. Um, sometimes you just, but. I, I like to, to manage the robot to see how big they can be uh, in the area, in my area. So that's the way I'm working. And then I think the best thing to do is to get them old and have good. But, but you can say, uh, if you want to shoot a nice six-pointer, you, you can do it. It's, but uh, I'm, I'm a little bit... Um, <laughs> um, I lose a little bit of words, but I'm trying to, to, to get the top top of the pyramid the, the, yeah the top of the of the trophies that's my um, my plan but um, of course it's you can have a great experience with normally six and six pointers and and like that so how do you you feel about that you have shoot a lot of robux in this trophy collection and every robux got their own story yeah, it, exactly. It's not only only the biggest robot you got the best story about. No. It could be a medium robot you have a fantastic hunt. Yeah, exactly. I, I think you are absolutely right, and, and that's a part of why I love shooting robots, because the management part, when you have the opportunity to do that, um, that, that doesn't necessarily bring the good hunt or the good stalk in, into the picture, but at least you give the opportunity. Um, when we are uh, stalking on, on Trolle Lungby together, I mean, if we just wanted to shoot a buck, that, that would be a very uh, quick operation. Uh, so the pleasure for me as a hunter is uh, to find the trophy that you pointed out. This is, this is the one I think is ready now. Yeah. With all the risks and all the challenge and all the evaluation that, 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 that comes into play there. Um, for me, what is the, the dream trophy, a, apart from that, of course, but... but uh, I, I love to shoot a, a nice, even six-pointer, and we've shot some beautiful ones uh, on, on Trolle Lungby. Um, but once you also have that in your collection, if we call it collection, I always, uh, I, I, I hate the word collection, I, I, I'm collecting memories and good hunting experiences. Um, 
I, I, then the, the trophy becomes secondary. I mean, some of these old bucks that actually didn't turn out to be uh, the uh, biggest one, um, they are fantastic to hunt because they get old, they, they get more clever, they get uh, unpredictable in, in their behavior. And uh, that's what I love about the, 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 the road here stalking because you can get to know the habits and, uh, and uh, all, the, all the ways they normally do and no normally react. Uh, and then uh, there's all the exceptions. And the older they get, the more exceptions you have. We've shot Robux in the middle of the day. We've shot Robux in uh, dense rain and heavy wind. Uh, it's not always uh, with the sunshine and a nice quiet evening. No. Uh, so, um, so for me, that, that, that's the memory that you're collecting. Yeah. And uh, that's what is hanging on the wall. This is an extremely Robux you're talking about right now. But as you say, and also if you compare the, uh, the different uh, areas or countries, maybe. I'm from Sweden and uh, in Sweden, we, we start the roebuck hunting mostly in August mm. after a rotten season. And uh, that's a quite a challenge, of course. It's maybe more easy to hunt them before the rotten as they do in, in, in uh, UK. And here in Denmark, how do you, do you used to hunt them here? How is it, if you compare the difference between the yeah, that, that, that's really a, a, a funny discussion because uh, in, in Denmark, our season starts uh, mid-May until mid-July. So we stop before the real rot uh, comes in and, um, and you have the opposite. You uh, let the, them go through the rot and, uh, and then you shoot them after the rot where they have uh, hopefully put, put in the, been putting their genes into the, uh, in, into the females. But uh, it, I think that's tradition. And then you have other countries where you are basically allowed to shoot the robux from uh, beginning of April or beginning of May and then all throughout the season. Um, I, uh, there's a lot of traditions in it. Mm. Um, I, I like the different perspectives. Uh, it's also very funny to be able to call a bug in and, and all the skills and, 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 uh, and, and, and you know if anyone how to do that and also how difficult that can be. Um, so so and, and in spring when we are hunting everything is getting green, it's getting very difficult to find them. Uh, they are, have their territories but they are getting ready for the rot and uh, the, the nature is just so beautiful in, in Denmark in, in, in May, June. Uh, so that's also a fantastic thing about that. Yeah. Coming up to you being hunting in shorts and uh, t-shirts uh, in, in, uh, in the middle of August, that's uh, another perspective. So um, uh, I like the different perspectives and that's also what the robot can do. Uh, so, uh, but again, back to, it, it, it's not just a matter of being able to hunt it all the season. It's also a matter if you want to shoot the right robux, then it doesn't really matter when you do it uh, in the season. So uh, I think you, the way you do it, uh, Linus, that, that, that's the key to do it consistently over, over years as well. Yeah, that's also a, a point when you, you're shooting them in, in August, for example. They got good color. Yeah. Uh, it's very beautiful trophies. Uh, if you shoot them early in the in the springtime, they're a little bit more uh, not that good colored. No, they're too yeah. pale at that time. Yeah. Yeah. We also got this uh, positive. Uh, we have to. We, we can shoot them now in in springtime in our area, but I, I think uh, we're not going to do it because I think it will. We continue to to hunt them in uh, August. I think this uh, for our part is the best thing I would say. But it wouldn't change your pyramid. Uh, it would still be the same box, so why, yeah. why start uh, hunting them earlier? No. Then at least they, uh, they get a chance to go through the rot and, uh, and get one more year on that, uh, on that uh, scheme. When do you start to hunt them in uh, England? In what period? I, I, I actually plan it depending on the Danish season, because the first two weeks of the, the Danish season, I want to be in Denmark. Yeah. Uh, especially here in my little place here. Traditional. So uh, I, I, I go there <coughs> for some days in the beginning of May, uh, preferably the second week of May, bef just before. So they have a bit, bit more color than, yeah. than otherwise. And then I go there in the beginning of July in the pre-rot. So not in the rot, but in the pre-rot, where they are still they be they're beginning to get pretty active again. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then I leave them. Uh, so that's the two times we, uh, we hunt them. How much does it... Um the difference between uh, May to July when you hunt them, are they 
you see them more in July, they're more out uh, in the rut, uh, hunting and chasing each other. Or, uh... yeah, yeah, they're beginning in July. Yeah. Uh, if, for, for me, June is the worst month because they, uh, it's as if they calm down, there's food all over. They yeah. just stand up, eat, and then they lie down uh -huh. again. <laughs> so it's a very difficult month to hunt them, actually. Uh -huh. So so May is, for me, perfect. The nature is uh, in, in full spring, and uh, and then in July, they, they start getting active and defending the territories they, yeah. they have. and, and they spend June feeding, being ready and strong for, for, for the rot. Yeah. It's like in Sweden, when we hunt them late in August, when the rotten season is over, they are a little bit tired. Yeah. The, the, the big robots they disappear and they're sitting down and they're sleeping or taking a rest after yeah. the, the rotten season. But then, then sometimes, we've done that a number of times, come up around September 1st, yeah. And then they start feeding again, being active. And then we've had some successful hunts there as well. Could be very good in September as well, yeah. yes. Yeah, Mikkel. You like to shoot uh, some abnormal Robux. I know it. You're very happy for that to do. And uh, of course, they are special with abnormals. They are not like others. I brought uh, some of the trophies from Trollumbi, and you brought your special abnormal Robux from Trollumbi as well. Yeah. Will you please tell us a little bit, a short story about the abnormal when you shot that one? Yeah, that, that, I think, you, you must correct me if I'm wrong, I, I think this was a buck that you've been following uh, as a regular six-pointer. And then uh, all of a sudden, one spring, he turned out, uh, he turned out like this. Um, an absolutely amazing buck. And uh, you, have, you had him on the same field, I guess, uh, more or less uh, all spring season. Yeah, all summer. And then uh, one week before the, uh, the season started in Sweden, he just disappeared. Yep. And um, you had some other hunters up, uh, looked for him for four or five days, every day, morning, midday, evening, gone. And then uh, we were lucky enough when I came <laughs> up, I think we found him the first evening, but he had moved. He yeah. had found a female, a very attractive female. So he moved... Uh, Switch side of the road. He, he went over the road. Yeah. And uh, one kilometer away or something like yeah. that. And then... Um, and it was impossible to stalk him where we saw him, I remember, because uh, the wind was so bad. <laughs> it was but very we thought, funny. Okay, this is a chance. We're gonna, we have to try. We cannot wait for tomorrow. And we ended up with uh, 20 cows in front mm. of us. Yeah. Curious cows. Yeah. And, um, and um, yeah, we had a fantastic uh, stalk on that. And, and I was lucky enough to, uh, to, to give him a good, a good bullet. Yeah. And then uh, it turned out, uh, what an amazing trophy. And, and for me, a trophy like that is uh, it's so unique. It, it, it's a fantastic buck in yeah. any senses, but it's so big, uh, it's uh, so unusual. And uh, yeah, that's also why I mounted it like this, uh, to can't, be able to see it all the way around. You can't compare Robux between each other, but this one is so spe spectacular uh, with this, a lot of pointers in all directions and as you, you said before uh, this roebuck was a, a regular six pointer from last year we know him we have pictures of him and this year when you shot him i don't remember exactly the year but it was a few years ago he just turned up in this in this shape and um, as I, I told you before i I'd rather give them a second an, an, ex, uh, an extra year and uh, all of a sudden, sometimes they show up like a irregular roebuck. I think it's very funny. But I brought some um, trophies to, to talk a little bit about uh, the management, how we do it in Tolumbi. Uh, of course, it's a, it's a long story, but uh, I, I will make it a little bit quick um, and see if I can explain it. As we talked about before, we take a lot of uh, photos of our roebucks. We are following them from year to year. And they're quite stationary. They, they live in almost the same area, and they used to stay there. And sometimes you get some mark in the ear, and like that, you can see it's the same roback. But sometimes they, they change, uh, like this one, the, the character completely. Yeah. But uh, you can see, ah, oh, it's the same roback because he got this scar on the nose or uh, the splitted ear or something, and it's quite funny. 
and uh, we used to, but it's very, uh, it's not very easy to, to find the the, the antlets uh, in the ground grounds. But we used to collect them if we can. But it's not very easy, you know, to find this one on a big field. It's it's not very easy. But sometimes we do, and uh, I think it's more like extra if we find them. Extra proof. Yeah, it's a nice antler. Um, I used to, to, to look for the, the young Robux when they're young, like this one. Um, you see, this is a good potential. The, uh, not very good corners, but a, a lot of pearling. And uh, a, like a one year old Robux, he starts to, uh, to split up to take, uh, make two extra points. Um, unfortunately, this one has been probably been hit by a car or something. That's because I have it here. But it's a it's a good and what is a good it? coming uh, robot. Mm. I would say it's a potential for to get big one day. Uh, you can see it's a very very young because it's very thin here in the in the bottom on the. So he's corners. only one year old. I would say it's one year. Yeah. 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 So uh, this is a very good potential coming robot if you've been alive. What a shame. <laughs> Sometimes they are not very good when they got hit by cars. Uh, I would say it's a, the, one of the best thing to, to, to look after. Uh, it's the base, the growing bigger and bigger after a year. This one is uh, it's a quite young robot with, with um, good cornets. They are compact. Uh, when they're getting older, they are hanging down a little bit on the side. You can see like this one yeah and you also see the base mm -hmm. is very thick if you compare to this one yeah this one actually been hit by a car as well and that one you have shot actually yeah yeah it's a other story about that yeah but uh, it's a very nice uh, looking six pointer regular a very beautiful animal and sometimes when they grow even older, they are changing a little bit the, um, how they look. You remember this one? Oh yeah, that was the uh, the horse buck. The horse buck, yeah. This is a very old one. You can see it's a crap buck. This we call him. Yeah. Not very big, uh, thin antlets, and um, you see the pointers are getting back, and uh, he's like like an uh, yeah, just falling down. <laughs> Cracking trophy. Yeah. And you said he, he's probably nine years old? I would say about nine, maybe ten. Yeah. Um, I would say we, we have been following him years, but probably he's not been not very special Roebuck. It's just a regular six pointer or something that we don't really, we can't remember them. Some of them have got um, uh, looking like you can. You can see, oh, is that Robux? But some of Robux is quite similar to mm. each other. Yeah. And this one is not, I don't think it's going to have been uh, something special. He, he is old, but it's a very good when you're hunting an old Robux like this and you get the su success and you shoot him, it's the very right one. Yes. Because he was very, very, very old Robux. And he was sleeping just before we shot him. He was very yeah. tired, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After rotten. And that story about the 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 buck and was something that one we talked about the, the cows yeah. in the barn when we, we we shot the irregular one and all was the same but we got about 10 15 horses around us who was uh, curious horses following us and it was very it was very quite good to have them because they was disper the 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 rodents didn't really react no. about us he was with the females so yeah. and she didn't notice at all we were hiding behind the horses. Uh, we used to take a lot of photos of our Robux. And this one is a very well-known Robux. We call him the carrot buck. Gulorn. The carrot buck. Yeah. Gulorn, Budansk. Um, it's a very, very nice looking Robux. It's like a murder buck, but um, he's a special Robux. And they have a good series of photos of him from many years back. So it's a very nice buck. And the other buck on your side, you can tell a story about him. 
Yeah, but, but the, the, basically this is a, a perfect robot to look at. Uh, completely even, nice uh, coronets, nice uh, pearls and color. And um, you had actually decided to give him another year when I came up. Uh, because you had taken a couple of other bucks in that area, so there were room enough for him to uh, to get another year. And then we saw him, and uh, he was sick. He had a uh, bad stomach, and yeah, yeah. Uh, he was getting very, very skinny. And again, you had pictures from him, I think two or three uh, months, sorry, weeks before the uh, the rot. And uh, we could just see he's uh, he's not going to make it for, for next year. No. And we actually ended up having a really good hunt on him uh, the, the following day. Yeah. But uh, a shame that he didn't get another year. But then again, uh, it's a beautiful trophy. Yeah. For for me, a, a, a regular robot like this, uh, that, that's as pretty as they get. That's also why I love shooting robots. Nice corners. A yeah. little bit. Yeah, and he's actually mature. What, what is this one? Yeah, Six years old? Say, but as you told us, it was like um, the store was... We have been taking some of the robots in the area. So sometimes you have to take a decision. Uh, you can not shoot them all. Maybe you can spare some of them and give them an extra year. And then we decided to give him an, an extra year to, to see what he's growing bigger or what's going to happen with him. I, I would say it was about five or six years. Yeah. So it was, it was it's in the right time, but we have been shooting some of the oldest one in the area first. And then we we decided to give him another year. But because he was sick, we, we decided to we can't we can't leave him because he would he would die in a couple couple of weeks. Or yeah, and he was definitely in pain. Yeah, that was for sure. It was a very nice robot, and yeah. it was a gold medal. So it was, a, it was good to take. Yeah, and it was a good hunter. Definitely, <laughs> the potato bug. Potato bug. We could be continue to tell stories about in hours, I think. Hopefully. Yeah. You have a lot of stories to tell us about your all the collections of Robux and uh, all yeah, the and, pieces. And, and we have many more to come. Experience, yeah. Uh, I will say thanks to you a lot that you have been inviting me to this place and had to see your fantastic Robux. You're one of those who've actually had it in your hand. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Linus. It's, uh, it's been... Uh, Privileged to have you here, and uh, I have uh, I've, you've really taught me a lot over the years of uh, how to do this selectively and be patient. Uh, that's how you end up, uh, <laughs> e even though this was with a little bit of help from Corona, then uh, it pays out to be patient one, once in a while. Then you get these chances uh, very rarely, but once in a while. So uh, thank you, Linus. Do you know about the Robux, the judgment? Is it coming up in... Uh in a few months, or what? Do you, do you know something about it? I, I can't find anything on when or how or anything else, but uh, it's registered in the system uh, by one of the master measures. So uh, one day I'll get an email or a call that uh, they would like to see my robot uh, somewhere. Um, so um, I better put a good insurance on it for that uh, for that trip. So uh, so let's see whether it is the new world record or whether it's just uh, my biggest bug ever. So it yeah. uh, doesn't really matter.